This video is sponsored by PetFlow. Click thumbs up for Rex the Maltese puppy. Subscribe to my channel and pick up a copy of my best-selling book too. So many of us are spending unnecessary time driving to the store to get heavy bags of dog food and carrying them to and from our car every week. If you're the type of person that likes to eliminate chores like this where possible, then let PetFlow handle all of this for you in three steps. Go to PetFlow.com slash Zach George. I'll have a link in the description. Choose your dog's favorite brand of food. Tell PetFlow how often you want it to delivered to your front door and enter code ZACK30 when you check out and you'll receive $10 off your first three automatic shipments. All those details are in the description. Today I'm joined by Rex and he's only three months old so he's still working on his fundamentals. Many of you out there have small dogs and I know I regularly receive inquiries as to what we need to do differently with small dogs as opposed to larger dogs. Well we're gonna find out with Rex today. Hey Rex, come here. Oh boy, I think we'll definitely need to work on come when called. When training virtually any dog, you'll find that they're more responsive the closer you are to them. Now I like to call this the training bubble, the distance between your eyes and their eyes. So one of the first things you'll notice about working with a smaller dog is that, well, they're small. So the distance between your eyes is quite significant. See, when you're close to your dog during training, it's a lot easier to keep their attention on you. And if you try to get them to listen to you while you're farther away, that training bubble pops. So we have to nourish it and build it slowly. So since smaller dogs are closer to the floor, well, ideally that means you should be closer to the floor too, at least in the beginning parts of training a dog. Do you know how to sit? Look at that. All right, so his family's been working with him a little bit on sit, it looks like. Sit looks really reliable, but look how far away we are. I mean, we're practically nose to nose right here. So let me just demonstrate my point. Let's see what happens when I ask Rex to sit when the distance between our eyes is greater. Rex, sit. So right there, he's looking at me and he's like, what are you talking about? Let's try it again. Rex, sit. Right? If I'm over here and I say sit, look at that, he pops right into it. But you could definitely see he was a little bit confused there when I asked him to sit from a distance. The idea here is to see if we can extend the training bubble in order to get Rex to focus on something basic like sit from a farther distance. Sit, good. All right, so that's a little bit farther away, right? Sit, good, excellent job. Sit. There are some of us who might find it more difficult to get close to the ground when training a dog. And if that's the case, try using a great treat and really prioritize teaching look at me to strengthen that training bubble. And see, if you really get look at me solid like this, then that will have a lot of positive effects on your training bubble in terms of making it bigger. All puppies have to learn how to reliably come to us when we call them. Most dogs don't generalize this skill from new place to new place or from circumstance to circumstance. And when you're training your dog to come to you, your training bubble is really important. Too often we expect our dogs to come to us from across the house or across a big field without extensive training. And that's not realistic for most dogs. That's why you really need to focus on training your dog to come when called in a small area like this at first. There's not a lot of distractions to throw them off and you can really focus on teaching them the concept. Not everyone's comfortable with it, but if you are, get real low to the ground like that. It's much more inviting when those big human eyes are right there inviting a dog. If you've got a brand new dog, focus on getting them to come to you from just a couple of feet away at first and use tiny treats liberally and an upbeat, fun tone to direct them and motivate them to come to you as you call them. Now, if your dog is a little bitey or you're not totally comfortable with your dog, use discretion here, of course. Let's see if we can get him to come from a little bit farther away. Come here, Rex. <laughs> Rex, come here. Rex, Rex. So right there, he's ignoring me. He kind of acknowledged me. He's thinking about it, but watch. I have a hunch if I get real low to the ground right now, he's gonna come running to me. Let's see. Rex, I mean, look at that, just like that. And so that really illustrates the point. When you get down here like this, dogs are like, oh, you look a lot more interesting. And resist the urge to get mad or frustrated when your dog invariably doesn't come to you sometimes. Hey, Rex, come here, come here. Right now, Rex is walking around over there. He's not coming to me when I call him as quickly as I'd like. So what do you do when your dog actually doesn't come to you? First, we're gonna shrink our training bubble and try and provide some additional motivation. I'm gonna let him know I've got that treat, but I'm not gonna give him a treat for not listening to me, right? I'm just gonna have him walk like this. Come on, come on. That way they really learn to go through the motions of actually walking towards you when you call them. And remember, if you got a puppy like this, you need to make sure that you have treats located all over the place out of your dog's reach that keep well at room temperature so that you can jump into these spontaneous training sessions as needed. Ugh. 
just like this. Sometimes dogs are so excited or maybe you're using treats that your dog isn't too enthused about. What do you do in that situation? Well, there's no harm in picking them up and bringing them back to where you called them from. While that doesn't really teach them to come to you, it still shows them that, look, I'm still going to enforce the rules. You can't ignore me. But training sessions like this aren't where you teach your dog to reliably come to you. These sessions in the beginning are just focused on teaching your dog the general concept. It can take many months to get your dog to come to you in much more distracting situations. Start calling them when you're cooking dinner, watching TV, on the internet, or whatever, and really catch them off guard. That'll prepare them for more realistic situations when you need them to come to you, even when they don't want to come to you. And as we know, the biggest mistake by new puppy parents, too much freedom, too early. So always make sure that your dog is on leash, especially when you're teaching them to come to you, whether you're inside or outside. The reason is, if they get away with routinely disregarding your request to come to you, well, it's gonna set your training back significantly. If this has already happened with you, that's okay. Just take a step back, understand it's gonna take a little bit more work since the habit is well established of not listening to you, but it's never too late to start over and commit to being consistent from now on. So what about teaching your dog to lie down, for example? Believe it or not, this is one of a handful of behaviors that is a little bit different when you're teaching a smaller dog, at least for most smaller dogs. Normally what we do with larger dogs is we try and lure them straight down and many larger dogs will follow that right into a down, but smaller dogs, not so much. This has more to do with their anatomy than it does with intelligence. I mean, it just is more awkward to lure a smaller dog into a dow. This requires you as a trainer to get a little bit more creative with your lure. Maybe you might wanna go from side, look at that right there. See how I went to the side? I've worked with many small dogs where this can be a two week process. So he's doing really well. Look at that right there. And I don't know if you noticed that, that was a little bit different. Rather than coming out like this, I actually went in towards his chest. See that, see how he's going backwards? and then through the legs. It's almost like they fall into the down right there. Good job. Click thumbs up for Rex. He did a great job today and he's handsome, right? Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Get $10 off your first three automatic shipments when you set up automatic pet food delivery through PetFlow. And a huge thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon as well. See you guys next time. Good job, Rex.